What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. So, I think this thing's pretty much done. Um, I can't do a test drive right now until I get my uh, proper size battery to fit behind the seat in here. Uh, get that from the guys at Helios when we get down to Florida for Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. This has been very stressful. The last little bit has uh, <laughs> really been trying my patience, but Came out pretty good. I'm, I don't know. The interior it didn't as spectacular as I'd hoped. I got, I don't know what I was hoping for. I mean, I put everything in it that I had envisioned. It just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it does the job. It looks good. It's, it's period seats right. Added some armrest. Um, I got that skull shift knob on there. That was the original shift knob that I put on the first hot rod build, and uh, I lost it. And I guess it was probably my first year at USTE. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I found it on the original shifter in the box that I carry the rat rods to events in. So <laughs> I was like, well, it's perfect. Perfect timing, too. So we used that Eagle Moss Deep Willys shifter. I had some issues getting that bolted through. I, I drilled a hole in the floor. It fit nice and snug in it. And then I got the carpet in and tried to bring it up around it a little too close. So I had to redrill one of the holes. Finally got it in. And... Uh, Got it all held up pretty good. So the seat sitting a little crooked right now because my battery or my yeah you know, my battery wires sticking straight through with nothing to do. So it's pushing the seat up, but that won't be a problem when we uh, get the battery in. The uh, armrests are I think those are just from a Trail Finder too. Um, some of the I think it's the scale interior for the TF2 the Mojave body, and it comes with uh, stuff for the four door version as well. But it doesn't come with enough stuff to do the full four door. They just recycled some of the parts tree. So I had some extra armrest and I painted them that uh, safety green color. And that's the theme of this. This is the original paint scheme on my original hot rod build. And I painted the engine that color, dashes that color, armrest that color. Just kind of a little subtle throwback. The original one, I did the uh, wheels that color. And it was a little, a little bright. But the body was this, this uh, I don't even remember what, dark green. Rust-Oleum, same can I painted it with. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy it's done. Um, I had some issues with the pedals. So there are three pedals in there, but unfortunately one is not where it's supposed to be. Uh, there wasn't enough room for three pedals, and the only spare pedals I could find were a little bit too wide, so we'll have to revisit that later. Um, I'm kind of out of time now. I'm half-packed to head to Florida, so I waited too late. But I got that moon pedal in there. And uh, at least you can see that in one other pedal. Um, didn't have quite as much real estate in there. That moon pedal's pretty, pretty large. It's pretty accurate to scale though, because these are pretty small cars in real life. But the carpet worked out good. I had this, I've been always used this sticky back felt and I can't remember where I found this other stuff at. It was a different brand, different from a different shop. I think the stuff at Hobby Lobby, um, it just, it was real, real thin. This stuff actually had a little bit more pile to it like it's carpet and uh looked a little bit more realistic so i went with that i couldn't leave it bare floor because it just you know it was just bare print uh, it was bad enough i didn't i couldn't really do much for door cards might could have made some like sheet metal stuff but it's i've i've, I've achieved everything i wanted to achieve that, that's the thing with me and the way i build i'm not the chassis is my main thing i i love the engineering the chassis suspension um, the interior stuff <clears throat> I'm just trying to push myself to go further this is the first one that's actually had a complete interior with uh, floors and the whole nine yards lately on the other rat rods I've been kind of <clears throat> throwing a dash in the seat and maybe shifter steering wheel and stuff but not going this far because you really can't see in a lot of them I mean they're, they're chopped and a tiny little window so this one lended itself to a full interior so we gave it one and I think it looks good with these uh this old roof frame. <clears throat> On the originals, these were wood, so that stain is kind of dark. It has a bad print grain, which I tried to sand off, and it kind of actually looks like wood, so I think we're just going to leave that. And it's it's neat. You can see the interior, and we have to be able to access it to change the battery, so we just pull this out and uh, pop our seat out, and we have complete access to the battery without ever having to take this body off again, because it is a nightmare <laughs> to get it on and off. So here's a better look at the dash. The dash is from that 32 Roadster model kit, 1.8 scale. See, so yeah, I did chop it down a little bit, but that's the original one that was in the original hot rod. And uh, again, it's that safety green color and it's weathered and it has full gauge pack. I re-glued some of that. 
I had the shave down the back of it. It had some little nubs to where it lined, lined up with the uh, Roadster body because we glued it directly to the windshield. So the windshield is hot glued to the cowl and the dash is hot glued to that. Um, and once I went back and reinforced the, the dash itself, I was worried about the steering column. And I'm not sure if I should shorten that or not. It's sticking a little too far back, maybe. I don't know. But I was worried about bracing that steering column because that steering wheel is super heavy. It's cast metal. And uh, I did that for the original car as well. That's the original column fit through that dash just like it sits right there. So it's kind of paid homage back to the old build. But that is a piece of a Tonka truck, vintage uh, 60s or late 50s fire truck, the hose reel. And it just had a hole on there. And this is the actual uh, shift knob that came with the 32 Roadster kit. So I just put a scale bolt through the steering wheel. And uh, yeah, then we got a suicide knob on the wheel. The uh, wrap is just electrical tape. <laughs> it's peeling up and it looks its age, I guess. So I'm just going to rock it like it is. Um, that's about it. I had one little issue that we touched on in the last video. So I never did, I was going to redo this rear window gasket. Um, you can see it's a little lumpy, a little uneven. I, I don't think I'm gonna mess with it now. I've got some stuff coming. I found actually like black, like sticky tack, like the stuff teachers had in grade school that would stick stuff on the wall with, but I found it in black and it's, it's moldable and it's kind of adhesive. But I think <laughs> now this stuff is super sticky. I don't know that I could get this out without damaging the body. And we're just too close to deadline to, uh, try for that right now so we, we may revisit that later but for now we just got a lumpy old rear window gasket but we learned a lot about that so the next time we run across that where we have the ability to do such a thing we're gonna have some better material to uh, give it a shot i did go ahead and re-weather the hood um it was slightly less patinaed now it's slightly more patinaed <laughs> it is what it is that it's obvious the hood isn't from this body the lines don't line up perfectly but the radius is close enough. We made that work a long time ago and it needed this flat grill to uh, really seal the deal. Um, I did have one major issue. I was trying to rush. This is still actually wet. I was trying to get this back on. So the, the front shocks screw in and squeeze the front grill and hold it in place. And then we have this one screw that goes through the hood into the uh, cowl. And it broke the hood. <laughs> I was getting a little carried away trying to get the hold and I screwed it all the way down through and broke the little thin strip of plastic that was holding it there. So I just threw a nut on there. I didn't want to use a big shiny washer. Um, this, yeah, it doesn't really stand out that bad, but again, something else we'll have to revisit later because uh, this, this, that's the line with the model and the RC car. We're, we're crossing that line. We're teetering on the edge. Um, and the more detailed you go, the more delicate it tends to get. So that's, yeah. This one is definitely a lot more delicate. These headers are super delicate. Um, they're resin print, I believe. So we got a lot of a lot of delicate stuff. We don't have a whole lot of suspension, but we do have functional suspension. So it won't flex out like the other rat rods did. Um, I did also hit the grill a little bit just to dull it back down. I hit the headlight lenses just to fog them up a little bit because they were a little little too bright. No headlight bulbs, but we do have the wires and stuff that we put on. So yeah, I think we're done. This build was definitely challenging on a lot of aspects, wire management, um, electronics management, hiding everything. Oop, come on, don't go in. And uh, yeah, doing a full interior with it. That was definitely a, a lot of new challenges, but I think it came out great. The, the stance, the tire wheel, the body, I think we nailed the period look that I was envisioning so I can't complain about that one bit. Wasn't the best print to start with. You know, we had some issues with alignment. Did the best we could to hide that. So uh, I'd say it's an 8 out of 10. <laughs> we'll see what the judges at USTE say. Maybe we can get us a trophy this year. This thing just looks me. It's got the perfect rake. These big tires, actual Goodyear tires on the back. It looks mean from, from behind. I, I love it. Uh, another, that's another failure point here was me going back and trying to feel that. I wish I'd have thought about that a little bit further in advance when I was first painting the body. Um, didn't do that great of a job of blending it, but it just looks like there was some damage back there that got halfway repaired. Uh, that, the tail lights definitely wasn't the right look for this thing. I don't, I mean, it, it, that was more of like a 60s custom thing. 
custom with a K, you know, the Cadillac lights on everything, it's Frenched in license plates. That, that wasn't the right vibe for this. This is hot rod. And I uh, wanted to keep it as traditional as possible. So I want to thank everybody for following along. This is the first build, kind of the first real serious build with the new shop and, you know, the whole new life of starting this YouTube thing full time. And uh, yeah, now we've got the space. I mean, look what we've done. So I can't wait to see what we do next. And uh, I don't have a clue what that is. I've got a few crawler builds in mind for next year. For this year, I guess. <laughs> Time's flying. But I don't know. we got all these events to go to. We've got USTE. And uh, we got Texas Crawl Fest and Beat the Creek. And I'm not sure yet for sure on doing any others at the moment, but I would like to. So we'll see how things play out this year. But uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I appreciate you watching. Get out there and do something with the hobby. Keep it scale. And I'll see you all in the next video.